Hi there everybody, Jimmy Newland here. I wanted to talk about how to use the Skynet Robotic Telescope Network to schedule an observation and even access your data. So the first thing you do is go get in your web browser and go to skynet.unc.edu and you log in. The login credentials of course are provided by me and once you log in it takes you to your observatory. You can see the things that are active, the completed ones, the canceled ones, they're all here, and I'm going to click Add a New Observation. This is obviously visual observing and not radio. And a couple of things. You need to know the kind of target you'd like to look at. Is it a galaxy, a cluster, a star, a planet, uh, an asteroid? These are all things that I've managed to, to image with deep sky, I mean, uh, the Skynet uh, observatories. I was about to talk about the, deep, the dark sky observatory, which is kind of been my favorite, mainly because I'm very fond of North Carolina, but if you pull down the list here, you can see there's Yerkes, which is in Wisconsin, Sierra Tololo, uh, Inter-American Observatory, which is in uh, Chile, Gort, I do not remember off the top of my head, DSO is in North Carolina, Athabasca is in Canada, Siding Springs is currently offline, uh, but it's in Australia, and Perth is working, and it's in Australia. So notice that it may be nighttime for you or daytime for you, but you need to make sure it's nighttime for the observatory that you are picking. So make sure you pick a good target, a good... Uh, so you want to see a, a southern sky object, you've got to pick one of the observatories that uh, is in the southern hemisphere. If you want to pick one that you know is only visible in the northern hemisphere, same deal. So I'm going to pick one that's visible in the northern hemisphere, I'm going to pick North Carolina because I know how to use it pretty well, and I'm going to pick the uh, OWL cluster, and I'm just going to search for it by keyword. Not all objects are searchable. Uh, the, the database seems to work with names that you would expect them to have. Messier numbers work if you put a space in between M and the number, uh, but OWL cluster works because I've already tried it. <clears throat> so notice that I've selected Dark Sky Observatory, and I've already looked at the map up here under Skynet Live and I know uh, you can there's more information on each of these you can see there are lots of observatories here that uh, come and go or offline right now or things like that um, and you can find out information about them under the telescope site Skynet Live shows you what's going on literally right now which we'll be looking at in a moment here um, but you need to make sure to pick good targets so I'm set for uh, let's see it's currently set for 13 hours in the future um, Looking at this, it puts a blue circle with an X to show you where the thing is located. It's in Cassiopeia. Uh, I'm going to, oh, let's just see what it would look like at sunset. Here, wait, let's look at today's sunset. There. So you can see where it would be located. So I'm going to go, I'm going to advance this a couple of hours. So it's near, uh, its highest point. Let's actually go back one. So that's 6.9 hours in the future. Uh, I, Having done this sort of thing before, I know it can sometimes can be tricky to be right at the zenith or near the zenith. So I'm going to do a little bit lower, give myself a better chance of success. Um, and I'm not going to change any of these features here, but if you scroll all the way down, you can see that it'll show you for the target you've searched for how uh, which things can see it when. And if it's visible northern and southern hemisphere, and you can see that these guys fairly visible for these guys but the different ones that are highlighted here in green or I guess they're not highlighted but the green and the orange they're like three different shades of green there uh, but that's I've picked a good target a good observatory and a good time uh, it's set notice that it's at its highest point 10 to 12 hours from now for DSO 14 it's actually about 10 hours from now and I've picked a little it's a little bit ahead of that a little bit before that so um Great, so I'm going to click Save and Choose Telescopes to make sure that it's set up the way I want. Uh, and I'm going to pick DSO 14, since I've used that one before, and I know it does pretty well. The 14 and the 17 both work. I'm going to hit Save and Continue. Now that I've selected my telescope, it'll tell me about filters. I am interested in color imaging. You don't have to do that. There are a lot of different projects one can do with just photometry, uh, allowing all the photons, or bright or dark, or you'll notice that different telescopes have different sets of filters, and there are combinations of things you can do, but I'm going to go ahead and try to make a, a red, green, and blue image out of mine. You'll notice that the filter match over here, I've selected some filters on the left that match with the telescope I've selected, so it takes a little bit of trial and error to make sure you match them up. I'm going to hit save and continue. Uh, and now, 
the exposures are some of the trickiest things to do. You want at least one in each filter, otherwise why would I have bothered to ask? And these are stars, and I know that two of the stars are very bright, and I'm thinking that uh, if I pick, it, notice at the warning here, this field contains very bright stars, magnitude five, and you don't want it to be saturated. So if I pick the uh, one minute exposure or, or 30 second exposure or 90 seconds, it's probably gonna be saturated. So they're trying to warn me that uh, don't do it too long. And it also says here the shortest allowed exposure is 0.3. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick one second and see how it works. Uh, if this were a galaxy, I would want a half a minute to a minute to a minute and a half, depending on how dim it is. I would do 30 seconds to be safe, though, because we don't want to waste all of our uh, time, because each of the credits is basically one second worth of time. So be careful about, you know, overusing it or wasting it, so you have to budget it carefully. Uh, but this is three seconds that I'm using out of my total, uh, which is not very much. And in fact, you can come down here and see that we've got a lot of credits to give at this exact moment. And um, yeah, this everything seems good. I've picked a good target, a good time, a good uh, observatory. It's not too far in the future. I haven't made any bad decisions about the height of the object or where the scope has to point. All of that looks good. So I'm going to come down to the bottom and say save and continue. And it should bring me to a screen that lets me, yeah, confirms all my different settings. I've picked... Uh, DSO 14 with a RGB filters, one second each. They're telling you that I, what account I'm using and how much time it's taking away from my total. And if you hit submit, it adds it to the queue. So you're not doing this live. You are you are letting the uh, system do all of this for you. Notice I've got now three active uh, projects: one for M36, one for R Laporis, which is actually going on right now or actually just wrapped it up, and then the OWL cluster. And if I go to Skynet Live, it'll show you, once it loads, which telescopes are open, which ones are closed. I'm doing this during the day. It's like 11.30 in the morning, Central Standard Time. So you can see the Green Bank, uh, even though in West Virginia the sun is up, it's not going to be a problem for the radio telescope. All of these other guys, you'll notice, well, a couple of them are locked. They're probably in repair mode. Um, we have a couple of other issues here and there, but mainly the ones that say bad are because the sun is up. And it shows you uh, where they're pointing, right ascension and declination, but there's a really good chance the sun is in the way. So the number here, so for prompt three, it says the sun is at 74 degrees. So that's above the horizon. That's a problem. So you can see that, uh, oh, and then RCOP had a camera error. That was the one I was doing. I hope that ended up Okay, so you can check to see which ones are working or not working. You can actually see uh, if one is in the middle. So I think prompt MO-1, yeah, it's in the middle of observation 2280262. And once your observations are completed, I'll show you what that looks like. Go back to optical observing or my observatory and we'll pick, oh, let's see. How about Messier 99 from, you can see that I did that with DSO. Uh, 17 and it'll take you to a page where your reduced fits files are available and here you can see I did uh, of RGB filters and this is what it looks like raw and you can get a lot more information uh, the bias field I mean the bias data the dark data you can go through this reduction yourself if you really are concerned about it uh, you can open it in the afterglow program you can resubmit it. You can add notes to it if there are things you want to say about it. Uh, mainly what people want to do is look at them. So if you click on one, it'll actually load it. Remember, the color has not been assigned. So this is the red uh, completely, well, essentially basically reduced. That's a lot more reduction would be necessary. Uh, you can see that this is a... Um, a galaxy but in order to make this thing work I would really need to download all three of them and open it up in some piece of software and start fiddling with it but that's how it goes so get yourself an observation going and um, once it's in there we can talk about how to produce cool pictures with it all right good luck and clear skies